Good morning, everybody. As we go to the Chumash of today, we start off with the Pashas by Midbar, the book of Numbers, chapter 1, verse number 1. And God spoke to Moshe in Midbar Sinai in the desert of Sinai. In the tent of meeting, in the first day of the month, the second month. In the second year. Going out of Egypt, Lamer is saying. Now she says, because of the, Israel was dear to him, he counted them orphaned. When they left often when they left um, Egypt, counted them. When many fell because of the sin of the golden calf, he counted them. <clears throat> the know the number of survivors. When he came, uh, when they came to cause his divine presence to rest amongst them, he counted them. On the first of Nisan, the Mishkan was erected, and the first to ear, which is this this pasuk, the first day of year, he counted them. So count the Jewish people, count the heads of the Jewish people. To their families, the base of to the father's house, the Mishpa Shemis in the in the number of names, called Zachar, every male, to their head. Now she said to know the name, the number of how many each tribe has. The base of if one's father was from the tribe of uh, and, and his mother was from another tribe. Who is counted according to his father's tribe, Lebeis Avisa. That's why it says to the father, the tribe went to the father. Legugulaisam, how do we legugulaisam means to the shekel, uh, the half a shekel per head, legugulis to the head. Ben Asr Shanam Amayla from 20 years and above. Alyate Tzavi Yisro, whoever goes out to fit to go out to the army in the Jewish nation, Tif Kadesim, you should count them. It's Avisa. To their legions, out of Adain, you and Adin. Now she says, comes to teach us that below 20, a person should not go out to war. And with you shall be, each tribe shall have a, a head of the child, a head of the tribe. He is the head of the, father, of the father's house. Now she says, when you count them, you count them with the prince of each tribe. And these are the heads of the tribes. Which will stand with you. Avidon ben Gedani, the Don Achiez ben Amishadai, the Asher Pagiel ben Achran, the God Eliasa ben Duel, the Naphtali Achira ben Enon. Verse sixteen: Ela Keruya Ada. These were the ones who were summoned to the to the congregation, and the Sia Matis Avisam. These were the leaders, the Nasi of their tribes. Rashi Alfi Salim, they're the heads of the thousands of Israel. Now she says, these are the ones that were summoned to every important matter concerning the congregation. And Meshach and Adon took these men, Ashenikvu and B'Shemesh, which were indicated by their names. Now she says, These 12 tribes, these 12 head princes, Ashenikvu Kam B'Shemesh, which were here announced with their names. So we know exactly who they are. And they assembled all the congregation the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees according to their families. The Mishpashem is from the name, from the counting of names. Each one 20 years and above. To their, to their counting. Rashi says they brought a record of pedigree. Shtara Yichus. They showed the Yichus where they came from. And then they knew exactly who their father was, who their grandfather was, who their great grandfather was. Uh, they brought each record of their pedigree and witnesses to their birth claim so that each should, one would trace the genealogy to the tribe. Kashativa Hashem as Moshe, as God commanded Moshe, 
Bemidbar Sinai, and they were counted in the desert of Sinai. And that completes the Chumash for today. We are in the middle of chapter 51 in Tanya. We started the 51st chapter yesterday. Pochamamish, truly similar matter. Derech Moshel speaking, uh, figuratively speaking, ain't save Baruchu. Abish to fill the world, Mimalik, all Almam, Lachayes, and to animate the world. It's important to, to realize the concept that the Abish to it creates and fills the world at this present time. It's not like a person that made a utensil and now the utensil doesn't need him. The Abish to God, the world actually needs the Ab needs God continuously. So there's a marked similarity between the soul that pervades the body. Just like the soul needs to pervade the body and give the body life, because if the soul leaves the body, chas v'sholem, then the body has no life. Permeating all world, just as just as an analogy, soul is found within the suf and and suffers, and it it it, it 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 fills in the entire body in a parallel manner. It's not like the soul and the body, because the, ultimately the body, the soul leaves the body, the body continues to exist. So it's not exactly, but the concept of Mamalik Alam, the way the soul fills the body, is the marshal, is the analogy. That the soul fills the body and animates the body, it gives the body life. So the body will exist after the soul leaves it, but it's dead. It has no life. There's no life in it. So in a parallel manner, ain't say fills and found in all the worlds. And each world are creatures without limit or without end. With their myriads and myriads of various grades of angels and souls and so on. And so too is an abundance of worlds. And Kate without an end. And they're without a limit. Higher upon higher. So in the realm of the spirit, separate and distinct entities are a result of there being one differential spiritual grade after grade. Because ultimately they're all spiritual, but they, to God they're all creation. So even spirituality is a creation. So therefore you have many different levels in spirituality, thus in multitude of worlds implies a multitude of varying levels of spirituality. Hence, in the sheer numerous of the worlds, the created beings each differ from the other in its spiritual gradation. Early on, when explaining these analogies, the Alter Rebbe pointed out, despite the various differences that exist between one bodily organ and the other, the soul's essence is equal to be found in all of them. He now goes on to explain that in the analogy of Ein Seif as well, the essence of the Ein Seif is found within a hidden manner equally within all worlds. And that's the, that, that's the, that is the concept of Echad, the oneness of God, that it continues to pervade all worlds and it continues to be part of every aspect of the world, even as it's hidden in its existence. Now the core essence of the blessed is equal, is the same as its way it's above and it's below. As an example of the soul mentioned above. So we're, we're in the Alter Rebbe explained that the soul core and essence is not divisible. divisible. You cannot separate the Yechidah Shebenefesh. The essence of the soul is one. And thus, it cannot, be said, it cannot be said that it's found in the brain to a great extent than in the foot. So the essence of the soul is in the foot like it's in the brain. As it's brought down in Tikkunim and Zoyar, he is hidden from all hidden. Meaning, even in the hidden, the higher hidden worlds, who saw some elements, it's hidden and concealed within them. That means even in the hidden, it has to be hidden. But it means even in the spiritual world, when in comparison to this physical world is hidden, it's hidden there too. So you shouldn't think, oh, the Ebishti. Is uh, over there. He's not. He's hidden here. No, Eirin Seif is hidden in Atzilus, like it's hidden in this world, because Eirin Seif, so to say, 
the ultimate, the essence of God cannot be revealed even in Atzilus, but it's there, and it's there like it's here. It's hidden. The difference is over here it's hidden. In the, in the world of Atzilus, it's hidden of hidden. Make sure it's so similar to like it's hidden in this world. Thus, the intent of the Kunna Zoyer, not that God is more concealed than all other hidden things, but he's concealed even for the hidden worlds. Why? As the reason being, the Abishta, less Asad, less Machshava, Tvisa Beklal. That's the point. Less Machshava, Tvisa Beklal, when the, when, the, when the prophet says, no thought can comprehend it, doesn't mean the thought of man. No thought. Even the world of Atzilus cannot comprehend the Abishta. Because the God is infinite. And the world of Atzilus is ultimately finite in comparison to God. Because God is equal, concealed in all worlds. No distinction can be made between the higher worlds and this world. He defies comprehension in the higher worlds to the same degree as it cannot comprehend it in this world, the lower world. So the Ebishter, the ultimate, the essence of God is found. Meaning, with regard where God is to, is to be found, just as he's found there in the higher worlds, so he's too found in the very lower worlds. The essence of the Abish is found, is right over here, whether you can see it or not. Self and so it's hidden. But the, you should realize that the essence of God is hidden over here, and it's hidden over there. We're both in the same situation, in the concept of the essence of God being hidden. Ultimately, the way God reveals himself, in, in the way the Abishta comes down in Revelation, in, in, in the Malakalam, the way he fills the world, self-understood in the world of Atzilis, there's a greater revelation of Malakalam. And there's a much lesser degree in this world. And that's completion of the Tanya for today. Today is the 25th day of the month, which is half of chapter 119. So if you do the half a chapter from the letter Aleph to the letter Mem in the in the book of in in the in the book in in chapter one hundred nineteen, you do the chitas of the day. I invite you all, my friends, ten o'clock. We'll continue to learn chita na chitas tanya of the Alter Rebbe, and uh, Mitch Shem. I'll see you all tomorrow, eight o'clock. We'll continue to learn the chitas of the day. Have a wonderful and beautiful day.